and welcome to The Writing Forge, where we discuss tips and tricks for honing your writing. I'm Bonnie. I'm Miranda. And we're your hosts. Let's Let's get get into into it. it. Hello, and welcome back to The Writing Forge. I'm Miranda. I'm Bonnie. Today we have JC with us. I'm JC Lynn. I didn't know I was going to chime in on that one. Welcome, JC. Well, you did a great <laughs> job. Um, we are going to talk with you about research in a little bit. Okay. But we thought first we'd let you introduce yourself to our listeners. My name is JC Lynn. I'm the managing editor of The Writing Bug at Northern Colorado Writers. Uh, I've been a member, participant, employee of Northern <laughs> Colorado Writers. <laughs> Since 2011, Mm -hmm. uh, that was my first conference, maybe. And super quick, how did you become a part of the writing industry? Oh, there we go. Thank you. My brain just shut down for a moment there. (laughs) Um, Uh, How did I become part of the writing industry? Well, uh, I think like many, uh, all of you and all of, not all of, but most of the people listening, I was a writer. You know, you, you, I started, I did recently found boxes and boxes of, you know, fifth grade writing and f- sixth grade <laughs> stories. And, oh, they're so dramatic and terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, of box of really bad <laughs> stories. Uh, and then, you know, always was writing, always was reading. I think it's a natural progression as, as a passionate reader to want to then tell your own stories. Uh, I love that you write the book you've n- not read or that you want to read. Uh, and then life happens, right? You, I was an air traffic controller, and I then I had kids, and um, was kind of up to my eyeballs in domesticity and work. And uh, life changed, happened, and I ended up becoming a teacher of English and literature, which of kind of expanded my love of reading and writing. And then, of course, you get to talk to a captive audience. (laughs) Just Uh, like now. Just like now. (laughs) And finally decided to finish something, right? That's that's the hard thing. Yeah, I think we all have folders and folders and folders of either ideas or partly written things or, you know, I have chapters that I'm not, you know, of things I don't. Random snippets. Random snippets. Back of receipts. Yeah, oh, the whole I, nine. <laughs> sticky notes everywhere of the, like <laughs> nighttime ramblings. Um, that make no sense in the make, morning. Right? <laughs> I have so one brilliant. that I keep. It's, it, it was hamsters, red suede shoes, and tacos. And I don't know what that story <laughs> is about, but there was a story because I woke uh, up and was like, this is going to be awesome. And then I wrote it down and that sounds it. like a writing prompt. Please, please write that story. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's our, yeah, Figure that at out. the end of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that being, well, uh, <laughs> we'll chat later because that would be an interesting thing to do. <laughs> and I, so I finally decided or f- was motivated to finish something. And I started working in the summertime. I had the summer off uh, and I, all the kids were old enough then to feed themselves Uh, And I just locked myself in my office and forced myself to write. Um, And then that continued on Sundays when I went back to school. You know, I'd have to. So Sunday was my writing day. Um, And those were, you know, it was it was a transition for all of us because I'm a I'm a cook. I like to cook and feed people. And um, so there were there was a long time of children hanging on the door. (laughs) We want waffles. Uh, And that's really what spurred my participation in NCW. I was looking for critique group because you have to, it's all fine and dandy to be a writer or a lifetime writer, but until you put your work in front of somebody who doesn't love you, um, (laughs) right, is that's the scariest, that's the terrifying step. And you need that. You need feedback from people, uh, you know, to give you input and, and, challenge you in places where you know you might be struggling you don't know you're struggling until somebody says oh that didn't I don't get that or that didn't make sense or mm-hmm. yeah and then of course when all of the people <laughs> who read it say one thing about understand. the same thing yeah. then you know you have a problem you know you significantly have a problem yeah uh, and you write sci-fi right sci-fi I fantasy write, I guess it yeah I, I've always called it science thriller at science this point thriller. it's speculative fiction okay 
Um, that's the new, that's the new um, <laughs> fancy phrase. Fancy phrase. Yeah. I like that fancy phrase uh, because it takes place in, in, you know, now times in reality, but it's just like reality slightly left of center. Oh. So I take, like so m- it's magical kind of, realism, but if it was sci-fi. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So everything happens in real, you know, like in the real world. And then I use kind of a sci-fi slant. I like James Rollin, Michael Crichton, I would say, mm. is speculative fiction, although I think he's a science thriller writer. Okay. Or was a science thriller writer. So, th- right, Jurassic Park right. takes place in... Real world. Real yeah. world uses real and theoretical science, but then... And so clarity is just super important. Thing. For me, I, yeah. I like to get... And maybe I'm... I, I mean... I don't recommend reading your negative reviews, but um, (laughs) (laughs) talk about self-crushing doubt. Oh, Uh, man. But a lot of the comments are, oh, it's too, you're, you're giving me too much. And Mm -hmm. that, and that, and, and that has changed as I've progressed, right? You, you take away some of the things you're writing, but I, I like real science. Um, I like real, I like to be in the concrete and I like it to be, uh, I mean, I love sci-fi, uh, and I think you take it too far. So, okay. I mean, you can take, I would say, Neil Stevenson. Stevenson? Stevenson? Yeah, I don't know how to say his name. I don't right. know how to say his last name. Sorry, Neil. Sorry, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I liked Seven Eves, but it could have been shorter. Uh, <laughs> no, just, but uh, you just buckle up for that. So you can take it to the, the, that extent, right? I mean, Where there's a reason we say hard sci-fi versus... Hard sci-fi versus... Yeah, there's all kinds of definitions. So so many subgenres. <laughs> my Yeah, my series that I'm working on that I'm trying to finish up now is speculative fiction but it's a science thriller okay so it's about you know it's about science gone wrong i mean i think most science fiction is you you lay that right f- that layer over a story of characters right you mm-hmm. it's all about characters but you lay that layer of of mishap conflict uh over the top of it and that's kind of the framework for where i write which and i like to write that real i like mm-hmm. to get into that so um and where where do you get your science? Like, is it like, oh, where do you start? How do you research I it? Where do you like, I guess, like what sparks the idea and then how do you develop it in? So this series is about genetic engineering. Okay. And I got there because I started with the idea. Oh, here's my, I, I actually had the middle chapter and uh, I wanted to figure out how to get there not through magic, not through um, a wave of the wand. How how would that? It was a thought problem. How would I get into that character and that what happens to that character using concrete science, science or theoretical science even? Because and and I started talking about CRISPR and um, embryonic stem cells and viral vectors in 2011. So that was all theoretical at that time. I love when things come up and, and then suddenly science fiction, science becomes, fiction real. becomes, yeah, mm-hmm. my writing, the, the theoretical science in my writing becomes a real thing is also terrifying too. But <laughs> <laughs> exciting. From some science fiction. And yeah. so I, th- uh, fortunately I, the first novel I had a lot, I had some experts. So I have, because I was a teacher, I had a science colleague who hooked me up with her professor who was into uh, microbiology because it's, you know, viral vectors and, and the concept or the process in the first book is the use of viral vectors to direct genetic change, right? Genetic DNA strands. And so I, there was a lot of, uh, it wasn't Zoom then. You, I had we actually had to speak on the phone, mm-hmm. so it was a lot of thought. <laughs> the in before it. times, <clears throat> the before yeah, times. Yeah, it was like, uh, you know, I had all these questions about bacteria and viruses and how they remain dormant in the body, and about vaccines. And um, I mean, ironically, <laughs> or coincidentally, <laughs> yes. I don't know if it's ironic, but now now we're really into that stuff. And so it was a lot of discussion, and it was a lot of pushback. So that was great. That's the good thing about experts and and people who know. Is that so? Would you say for someone, so like for the audience who's listening, so would you say interviews are the some of the best ways to get research for I, whatever they're researching, or is it a combination of stuff? Or yeah, I started reading because I wanted to speak with 
a certain level of non idiocy <laughs> <laughs> to the expert. <laughs> But, there, you know, you can only get so far with reading, at, at least in my case. And I really wanted to dial in on specifics, specifics on how. And and I'm not slamming that in the book. My books are, I would say, as a, as opposed to Neil Stevenson, which is not a cat, who is not a casual read. Uh, mine are more, they're fast paced. I would I would call it a, a beach read. Right, where you take it on vacation and it's fun and you get through it. So kind of, I mean, kind of like like Dan Brown, but but yeah, sciencey. like Dan Brown, um, Collins. Forget what his first name is. He writes a lot of science thriller. He wrote, mm-hmm. uh, not Mimic. I forget which one he wrote. But I wanted the background, the foundation, to be there for myself. That's really where my okay. research becomes important. And of course, I read. I, mm-hmm. I, I love knowing. I just love knowing <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Uh, and so, well, and then just like generally, why, why does like, whether it's science fiction or fantasy or whatever, like, why does research matter in fiction? I was thinking we could, we could broaden it up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I don't Like just in general. I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter to everybody. Hmm. True. Yes. It is another thing that is very genre based. I, I think, yeah, it depends. And it depends on who you, where you're writing, uh, I feel like I might play a counterpoint to that because I think it is kind of important for you as the author to do research in any any aspect of life that you touch on that you aren't personally familiar with. I agree with that statement, okay. but I would say there are authors who don't. Okay, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I would have loved to have traveled to Europe, which is where the most of my first book uh Takes place. takes place, but I couldn't afford that. Mm-hmm. And so I did a lot of traveling, you know, through the internet and doing research that way. Uh, but yeah, I like context. I like research. I like to be anchored in something. If, But there are people who write a book a year and they're not doing any research. True. Right. I don't know. I feel like I feel well, like it depends. Because so, for instance, I, I've edited a lot of romance novels in the last uh, couple years. And she writes a bunch. She writes like five books a year. And she still has to do some research because, for instance, she has a character with MS. So she needs to read up some on MS or she has a character who's a fireman. So she needs to uh, ask, talk to talk to firefighters and, and get some of the details. Yes. And I would say. Uh, I wasn't going to bring up the romance, but you did. Uh, <laughs> it's me, my fault. No, not your fault. But and I, I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to slam romance because I think <laughs> they're the only people making money right, right. now. <laughs> uh, I would love to write a good romance, but I'm not really great at sex scenes, and I don't the drivel. It's not my. <laughs> it's not my thing. Uh, I want to clean. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I have a hard time even reading it. To be honest. <laughs> Uh, it's too but emotionally gooey. there's a difference between, oh, I'm going to do some research on MS and figure out or talk to somebody and get a, you know, so I can form a character versus I need to learn about microbiology and yes. viruses. There's definitely I need to have half a PhD. Mycology. <laughs> yeah. T- I need to find somebody who can. I, my thing is I, you could write anything about mycology if you wanted. You could do a little reading and say, OK, I'm going to write about this. My issue is I don't want to write something so outrageously incorrect that a microbiologist would cringe when mm-hmm. I write it. That's my that's my benchmark. It takes me two to three years to write a book because of the research. Okay. And well, I think that's a good, like, there are different levels of research and there's different levels of research needed. So you need to figure out what your book is and which things might possibly throw, like, like you're saying, the microbiologist. So, so the reason to, to research the, the MS for your character with MS is so that someone who has it doesn't read it and think, Bullshit. person has no idea yeah. what they're talking yeah. about yeah so how do you <laughs> i swore <laughs> it's all right he's sorry bleep it out. okay that's okay you'll have to bleep it out um, he's used to that with me um, <laughs> um and so how do you i guess that's another really good question is how do you set those ba- like how do you figure out how much research to do mm-hmm. how do you set those boundaries and how do you stop yourself from going too far because i know my god i i'm sh- I'm sure many people can relate, but like the YouTube rabbit hole, the Wikipedia <laughs> rabbit hole, like yes. you start you start researching one thing because you're like, oh, wait, did they have, you know, what did the toilets look like in the late 1800s? And then all of a sudden you're learning about like canning and when it actually started <laughs> and things of that nature. And so when I figure that out, I will tell you. <laughs> OK. <laughs> all right. Uh, no, there's the yoga book I wrote, nonfiction, clearly had a, has a voice, my voice as a yoga instructor and my my uh, take, my spin, my style 
on in my brand of yoga, you could research yoga until you died. <laughs> I mean, there's so many aspects and different nuances. So I really focused my research once I discovered a kind of a mind blowing fact, um, which is that everything in yoga is made up. Um, <laughs> but everything in life is. I know, but I mean, in a, <laughs> but I mean, in a very like whoa, mind blowing way. <laughs> Hot uh, takes here today, people. Yeah, hot <laughs> takes. Read the book. Uh, I'll put a link in the notes. <laughs> yeah. I had to decide what I was going to cover. So, and that's a different approach. A different approach. It's a nonfiction book. So it's a shorter, you know, it's a shorter word count. Uh, I needed to hit certain beats. Uh, I wanted to encapsulate something and make it, it was about um, how the reader was going to to consume it, digest it. Mm. Uh, so that set some limits. Okay. Uh, and the, and, I, but in terms of fiction, yeah, I am, I'm like, I love to know stuff and I, I will go down that canning rabbit hole, <laughs> uh, not canning per se, but <laughs> yeah, uh, I like, folks. yeah, I really, and then you, cause, and here's why, cause you just don't know where it will take you. Very true. And then you might find something incredibly mind blowing or really interesting. The challenge is a balance, and I, I don't I don't think I've reached it yet. Okay. Uh, but I like a lot. I also like to consume a lot of uh, what I call digestible research. Mm -hmm. Like articles and... Experts who know how to write to the layperson. Yeah. True. Yeah. You know, that... And those are great introductory texts. You know, oh, yeah, they, they make it easy for you to understand. Okay. And so if someone came to you and was like, I have this idea, how do I research it? Like, where, where do you have them start? Where do they go from there? And kind of like, if there is a way to limit yourself, because I know I will, <laughs> I will try to be like, okay, I only need these points for this scene. And so anytime when I'm focused, if I'm not focused and the ADHD is off the charts, <laughs> then good luck to everyone around me. But if there's, uh, if I'm on task, I try to like have like, I need this, I need this, I need this. And then I look up that information and then it's like, okay, shut it down. <laughs> and so that's, down. that's how, that's how I do it. And so if someone came to you, how would like, where do they start? Where do they go? I it? think it's a matter of genre. Yeah. I, I mean, sadly, you know, that's where we're, that's where we're at. Uh, it, okay. So multiple. Wow. Okay. What are you writing? So you have this idea. What is it? What are you writing? Who are you writing it for? Uh, I, you know, you have to ask yourself those questions. Oh yeah. Cause if you do military sci-fi to a military person, oh. that changes your sci-fi very differently Hella, from let me tell you. a PhD in <laughs> Theoretical mathematics. Uh, every time someone says silencer in a movie or a television <laughs> show, I grind my teeth. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not a silencer. It's a suppressor. It's a suppressor. <laughs> Shut up. <the, you> know? <laughs> or because I was an air traffic controller, radiography or radiophony, right? The language of, mm. of there is nothing worse than I hear over and out. Stop it. <laughs> over means I need you to respond to me. So you can't be over and then out. Out means I'm done. <laughs> I'm not listening yeah, you anymore. Can't, you can't do it. it just, I mean, it drives me mad. So yes, you. Ha I think you have to, I mean, I. So what genre? What audience? Yeah, what audience? And then really who your characters are. Okay. So uh, I have a former Marine. He had to know stuff mm -hmm. that I didn't know. He is teaching the other character how to fire a gun. I had to learn how what grips i had to learn how to i had to just research how to aim ideally you're having a conversation with someone yeah. uh and i know that's hard for the people for us writers introverts to have a conversation <laughs> with people you can uh, do it through but, email uh yeah you but yes you can and so that, those are the questions what mm -hmm. am i writing what genre who am i writing for and who might po who might possibly read it okay. if i have a marine in my book if a marine read this book would he want to hunt me down and <laughs> pummel me yes. probably more effectively than your character yeah exactly <laughs> and then you do have to do your research in terms of genre what what are the expectations what are your page links what do you you know and then you can go down the rabbit hole as far as you want to but 
you might never get out and then you may never write your book. Well, and it's kind of maybe a closing thought because we're running out of time. Like you can do as much research as you want. You just should not try to put it all in your book. True. Yes. And that I have used research from the first novel in the second two. Right. So don't throw that research away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Bank it, especially if you in if you're writing something that's a trilogy or more than one book. Yeah, that might be interesting and it might be overwhelming for your story, but then just cut and paste it and put it somewhere safe. Keep it in the back of your mind because that might be able to you might be able to generate the next book or use that in the next book. Yeah. Never throw anything away. Yes. Always have I call it uh well, it's probably not the most flattering name, but I have the trash file. <laughs> and so everything that I think is actually decent and I want to save, I put it in a giant Word document. And Yes. And, and I, I use Scrivener, so I can, I can say Ooh, research. You have folders, yeah. Yeah, I have folders. Uh, and it's like a, you know, it's a virtual cork board, yeah. essentially. So I will put all that in research. And then you can label that, you know, you can label the research there and then it it will come back to you. I mean, right, we're all readers. Mm -hmm. You will keep it in your brain. You will know that you learned that, read that, and you'll say, ah, I have that somewhere. And if you keep it in a research folder or a trash <laughs> folder or a tidbits whatever or folder. whatever you call it, you will go back to that and you can find it and then use it again. So awesome. really research rabbit holes are not They're useless. Not no. It's not terrible. But yeah, you you eventually, you eventually have to write something. Yeah, that's do, the only do thing. Prioritize Make sure you your do book. your writing. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that is unfortunately all the time we have for today. We may have to do a second episode at some <laughs> point to continue on down our own research rabbit, rabbit hole. hole. <laughs> so um, thank you so much, JC. You're we welcome. really appreciate it. And uh, here's our question for our for our listeners today: uh, Where do you get your research? You know, share it with us in 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 social media, and, and we can help each other. And also, research. slightly controversial, Oh yeah, Wikipedia, yay or nay? Yay. Yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> it's a first source. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you very much. Shout out to us on our socials, and we will catch you in the next one. Thanks for joining us for this episode of The Writing Forge, an NCW podcast brought to you by Nagano Press. To learn more about The Writing Forge and our parent company, Northern Colorado Writers, be sure to check out our website at northerncoloradowriters.com. Check out our social links in the description. You can subscribe to The Writing Forge wherever podcasts are aired. If you like this episode, you'd really help us out by rating and reviewing. If you're looking for more informational writing content, be sure to become an NCW member. Stay sharp, my friends. Stay sharp, my friends.